a Premier League title race for the ages. Two teams going head to head, so much riding on every single result, with one team looking set to throw it all away, while the other is ready to pounce after the most vital of victories. That is the situation at the top of the table between Arsenal and Manchester City. So today on Football Reality, we're asking who will win the Premier League title? Arsenal's season has been nothing short of extraordinary. At the beginning of the campaign, the Gunners were tipped by most predictors to finish 4th or 5th, suggesting the general feeling was that their chances of finishing in the Champions League places were on a knife edge, with them looking set to break into the top 4 last season before tailing off. More of the same was expected of Mikel Arteta's men. We at Football Reality said they had an outside chance of winning the Premier League, but before we get too self-congratulatory, we also said the same about Chelsea. However, Arsenal have never been lower than 2nd all season and after 33 matches, have only been off the top spot for just three game weeks. They got off to the perfect start, winning their first five matches, and have barely let up since, winning 23 times, losing only three and racking up 75 points before the meeting with City at the Etihad. Take a look at some of our other videos where we identify the changes Arsenal have made this season and how Mikel Arteta has been able to implement his style and philosophy on players who are pulling in the same direction. It may not be a Leicester 2016 level shock, but few would have anticipated Arsenal winning their first title since 2004 should they do so this season. Manchester City, on the other hand, surprised no one by being in the title race again. Champions in the previous two seasons and six-time Premier League winners in 11 years, the signing of Erland Haaland has made City too strong in many people's eyes, and only the most outlandish predictions saw anyone other than Pep Guardiola's men as champions once more, but the expected stroll to the title did not materialize. Other than lying in fourth after the opening weekend, City have never been outside the top two, sitting on top after two other game weeks. Haaland, as expected, has taken the league by storm, scoring 34 times from the 32 he's played, as the citizens have lost four times all season. However, questions lingered over them about whether they are a better team without their main centre-forward. They have had uncharacteristic blips in form, and despite always having Arsenal in their sights, were as many as eight points behind them just five game weeks back. So why were sports data analysts Grace Note now giving City an 80% chance of winning the title and just 20% for Arsenal before they met at the Etihad on Wednesday? There are a few reasons for this. The first is the fact that City had two games in hand over the Gunners, trailed them by five points. Two wins equals six points, which equals City in the lead. Fairly straightforward if they win those games, of course. Winning those games shouldn't be unexpected, given the fact City have won eight and drawn one of their previous nine league outings. But the biggest factor is Arsenal's slump in form, having only drawn three times in their first 29 league fixtures. The Gunners have only taken a point from each of their last three. They surrendered a 2-0 lead away at Anfield, before letting the same thing happen at relegation threat in West Ham a week later. A possible bottling of the title went from being whispered about to being shouted from the rooftops last Friday night, when bottom of the table Southampton went 2-0 up at the Emirates before Arsenal salvaged a 3 draw in the dying minutes. In a match that left both teams deflated, dejected, and wondering what could have been, they needed to get back to winning ways as soon as possible. But the fixture gods were not smiling on them, as their next match was away at Manchester City. It would have been a difficult fixture at the best of times, but when you consider their form, what was at stake, and the fact they haven't beaten City in the league since 2015, there was no worse team Arsenal could have faced. City were also buoyed by two wins over the Gunners early Earlier this campaign, a 1-0 triumph in the FA Cup, plus a 3-1 win at the Emirates in February, which was not only Arsenal's latest defeat, but one of only two they've had at home in all competitions. It seemed odd to have so much inevitability surrounding a team that still wouldn't be top even with a win in midweek, and it's not just because of the games in hand. Finishing seasons in top form is what City do. Last season, they went unbeaten from mid-February to the end of the season. The season before, they only dropped off once the title was wrapped up, and who could forget their unrelenting run to a 100 points a few seasons ago. The ability to thrive under pressure and manage a tough run-in is something only few teams have, because you need experience to do it. Like the Manchester United teams of Sir Alex Ferguson, and more recently, Real Madrid in the Champions League. Having been there, done it, and bought the t-shirt is priceless, and City have this experience in abundance. While this is a whole new situation for Mikel Arteta, and pretty much his whole Arsenal squad, it spoke volumes that Alexander Zinchenko was the man to literally regroup his teammates when 2-0 down to Southampton. He and Gabriel Jesus 
are the only ones in the squad used to Premier League title successes and should know what needs to be said and when. The pressure also got to the Gunners last season. Three times they put good runs of form together to break into the top four, and three times their form dipped again and they dropped out, most crucially with two defeats in May, one of which was against Tottenham, and they ultimately missed out on Champions League football to their North London rivals by two points. It seems that recent history is repeating itself, just a few places further up the table. Was it the pressure? Was it the experience? Was it the talent? Or was it something else that made the difference on Wednesday night? Whatever it was, Manchester City dominated Arsenal, with two goals for Kevin De Bruyne and one each for Haaland and John Stones, allowing City to cruise to a 4-1 win, where they made a title decider look like a match between the champions elect and a bomb half side. So the Premier League title race is all over, right? Well, if 30 years of the Premier League has taught us nothing, it's never over till it's over. How can the Gunners get back into this? The answer could actually lie away from the league. Arsenal were knocked out of the Europa League in the last 16, which means, thanks to City ending their FA Cup run, they only have league fixtures for the rest of the season. Counter that with Manchester City, who are still in three competitions. They'll face Real Madrid in the semi-finals of the Champions League, a competition they've been desperate to win for years, while we'll have the first ever Manchester derby in the FA Cup final. With every game in all competitions crucial, even City's huge squad depth will be pushed to its limits, and Arsenal will hope they'll be distracted enough to drop a few points in the league. Not only will Arsenal be able to pour all their focus into the Premier League, but they'll be able to stay much more rested than their title rivals which could be all the advantage they require. Arsenal have five more matches to play all season, while City will have either 10 or 11. After their meeting, Arsenal face Chelsea and then have two tricky ties with Newcastle and Brighton. The last two fixtures against Nottingham Forest and Wolves may look simple, but with both of them possibly fighting for their Premier League lives, they could well be the toughest matches Arsenal play all season. City play Fulham and Chelsea, and against three teams fighting for survival. Then the last two are against Brighton and Brentford respectively, who both could need something to secure European football, or could already be on the beach. Despite all they have achieved and all the time they've spent top, will losing out to City be a failure for the Gunners. Since that last title, they've only finished second twice, in 2005 and in 2016, when they were never really in the title race before pipping Spurs to second, as Leicester won comfortably. Since then, they've never even finished in the top four, finishing as low as eighth on two occasions. Surely the fact that they're in the title race, something the most ardent Gooners didn't expect, shows just how far they've come in a short space of time, and missing out to a strong City team is still an advantage. So who's going to win the Premier League title? After that demolition at the Etihad, we, like probably every everyone else think that it's Manchester City's to lose now. What we will add, however, is that despite so much pointing in Man City's favour now, there is still a month of the season to go, and if Premier League history teaches us anything, there is ample time for another twist to this tale. So don't rule out Arsenal just yet. Time for you to answer the million pound question. Will Manchester City win this season's Premier League? Or do Arsenal still have a chance? Give us your predictions in the comments. And if Arsenal do finish runners-up, should their campaign still be seen as a success? Thanks for watching this dose of football reality. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe so you're ready for the next one.